Hi everyone and thank you for joining us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. I'm your host Leon Gordon and we're back as always with our weekly dose of Power BI learning and knowledge to come together as a community. The, the Q&A is now going to be open so please do type into the chat uh, where you're dialing in from and what you hope to get from this fantastic session on external tools for Power BI and how to create them uh, with my friend and former data platform MVP, Mark. So I'll just give a brief background um, in regards to Mark and then I'll hand over to him for his session. So as I mentioned, Mark is a, a data platform MVP. He's also a fast track recognized solution architect and Microsoft certified trainer, Power BI, Power BI enthusiastic public speaker and passionate for everything which transforms data into action. Um, I'll just hand you over to Mark now to go into a bit more detail and to take his session. Hello, everyone. Thanks all for joining and uh, thanks for having me at, uh, at your user group. Um, before I introduce myself, I will kick off the session. Um, today I will talk about Power BI external tools and how to create them. On screen, you already see a bunch of external tools that you might know and, and recognize and that you might have used yourself. But the three most famous ones are definitely DAX Studio, Tableau Editor, and Applicate uh, or ALM Toolkit, where you can compare models, etc. More about that in a second. Um, so you might recognize these three. We will briefly and very shortly cover these three, but definitely we will look at other ways and other tools that are that are out there and how you can create your own tool. Before we get started, I will briefly introduce myself. My name is Mark. I'm working as a data analytics consultant at Macau in the Netherlands. Uh, we're a Dutch Microsoft partner um, and we're also having offices in Germany and Lithuania. We basically do everything Microsoft as an implementation partner for our clients. Um, as Leon already introduced me, I'm three years in a row awarded as a most valuable professional in the category data platform. Um, and besides that, also a fast track recognized solu solution architect um, and hope to expand that in the next year as well. Um, besides that, I regularly blog on my own website, data-mark.com, uh, and also feel free to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter and connect with me if you want or have any questions. So enough about me, let's get started with today's session. What we will cover today is first external tools. What is it? How does this thing work? Then we'll briefly talk about analysis services in memory. Why is this important and why does this relate to external tools? As a third topic, how can you start building your external tools and what do you need to do to build one? Um, fourth one, we will cover document, documentation of solutions. And you might think this is a little bit out of, uh, uh, a little bit off topic, but you will, we will get there in a second. Um, and as a fourth one, I will tell you all about the model documenter, the external tool that I created myself, the learnings that I took from it, which you can prevent and, and learn from if you ever decide to build your own tool. Um, so, external tools, what is it? External tools are actually tools that you can integrate with Power BI to read and write to your Power BI data model. You can read the, the metadata from your model, but also write back in certain scenarios um, to use external tooling to build your data model, publish it to the Power BI service even if you want, but you can also integrate it typically in uh, Power BI desktop. It is a connection to the data model and only to the data model. An external tool does not interact with the visual layer of Power BI. It is only related to your uh, a tabular object model that runs under the hood of Power BI. It is third party tooling and it is depending on the new metadata format. Well, it's not that new anymore. It was introduced in 2020 as a preview, but now the, if you run a recent build of Power BI Desktop, everything will be by default in the new metadata format. External tools are known for read and write capabilities to TOM, Tabular Object Model, which is a structure that Power BI is using in the data modeling under the hood. The most known or and best known tools are DAX Studio, a Tableau Editor and ALM Toolkit. But why not add your own tool? Well, back in the days, uh, I, I believe it was somewhere 2021, beginning 2021 or maybe late 2020, um, Microsoft opened this up and allowed you to connect your own tool to Power BI Desktop in a supported way. Previously, this was unsupported, but now we can do this. And actually, let me directly jump into some first demos and, and see how this works in practice. 
Um, to show you the demos today, I spin up a, a simple Power BI desktop file, uh, which is just the dashboard in a day report that we you've probably seen before. Uh, and connected to that, uh, I have a few tools. So the first one that I will show you is just the external tools ribbon. Here on the top in the in Power BI desktop, you will see the external tools ribbon where you can find all the external tools that I have installed. Might be that you have different one or uh, you see new ones that you've never seen before, uh, but all these external tools is what you can easily install and connect to your Power BI data. Um, the three most famous ones are on the left side here for me. So ALM Toolkit, DAX Studio and Tableau Editor and a bunch more, but let's focus on these first three for now. Um, by simply clicking this button, you will spin up a new instance of this application that will connect to your uh, to your file. So here we have it. This is Tableau Editor. I run Tableau Editor version two. There is also a version three, which is as a paid, paid license model. Um, but for demo purposes, I'm just using version two. And as you can see, let me zoom this in a little bit so you can see it. Um, I see all the tables that I have in my data model. So I see sales table, product, geography, uh, etc. And with that, I can start reading what's in my model, but also start interacting and uh, um, building new things in here. So let me start with, for example, the sales table. And in here I see, for example, my sales measures. So I see the uh, uh, sales prior year and the sales total. Let's just see if we can add a new measure to it. In order to do this, I zoom out quickly uh, so I can better read what I'm doing. And in here, I can start typing a new measure. For example, uh, let's say we want the average sales in this case. Um, so it will be sales and, and uh, revenue column. Of course, you have to type everything yourself in here. There's no IntelliSense in Tableau ed uh, Editor version 3 there is. And here I can rename the measure if I want uh, to something like uh, sales average. As simple as this. Um, once I created this object, um, I actually created a new object in, in my data model, but it's, till now it is only in Tableau Editor. It's not in Power BI Desktop yet. Um, there's a little save icon here on the left. Top. And once I click the save icon, it will save back to Power BI Desktop. So let's go into Power BI Desktop and see if we can find this measure now. Um, you see that a lot of things start re-rendering, and that actually means that something changed in my Power BI model. If I expand the display folder now, I see that the sales average is actually added with the measure, uh, which is the measure that I just created. Um, as simple as this, you can uh, use third party tooling to create new objects in your Power BI model or even just read what's there. Um, something similar that you can do is interact with models that are already published to the Power BI service. This is depending on XML endpoints, XML for analysis. Um, and basically that is what you have to run uh, uh, in the in external tools in Tableau Editor if you want to connect to that. For example, you can simply click file and then open database. And here you see uh, a server uh, that I had connected in the past. So let's just connect to this one. And will ask me to authenticate. In this case, I have to authenticate with my AD account. I believe it is this one. There go. And in a moment, we will start connecting to this model. And now I can connect this external tool um, to, to my Power BI data model that actually runs in the Power BI service. I can do this the very same things uh, um, by reading the data model, but also by applying new changes to it if I want to. Um, but I trust that you will understand that it works in the very same way. There's one thing you have to keep in mind. If you make changes to a data model using XML endpoints, there's no way to download this file back to a Power BI desktop file. So keep that in mind and consider applying your changes to your Power BI desktop file and then publish the desktop file to the Power BI service if you like. Having that said, this is just one tool that you can use. Another tool that is also a very famous one is DAX Studio. And here we have DAX Studio. We start with the very same concept on the left hand side. Uh, we see all the tables that we have in our model and this one I can easily zoom in. Um, 
And for example, I can uh, start running queries here like evaluate, uh, evaluate, and then just give me a table, for example, sales. If I run this one on the bottom, I will see in a second uh, the query results. There we go. Uh, I will just get a view on the table that I have in my data model. Uh, it's running a query as we speak. Um, but you can see here on the bottom, and that's something important to remember in a, uh, in a moment from now when we start talking about building tools, is actually that this is now connected to a local host, uh, which is the local host that runs on my computer, where Power BI is running at this moment. Um, so that is the, actually the server where Power BI runs at this moment. Um, I assume that my computer doesn't really like the fact that I'm presenting and running queries at the same time. Um, so we'll just trust that this will work and I will just cancel the query for now. Um, but in a second, I will show you other demos as well with, uh, with Dax Studio. Um, but how do you get all these tools? In the beginning, I showed you many tools on, besides only the, the three famous ones, but actually uh, there's a little pain that you will experience when you try install, to, to install these tools. This basically comes down to requiring admin permissions and downloading and installing them one by one. And if you want to have all of them uh, to just try and explore them, that will take you a while, especially if you're trying to run this on your organizational computer where you cannot, uh, where you don't have the admin permissions to, to install software. Um, interestingly enough, the guys from Power BI Tips, they built one tool to rule them all. They built business ops, um, and this tool helps you to install all the external tools in one go. You can simply click and select them uh, and install all these external tools for you, which also require you only once to, to have these admin permissions. Um, if you are willing to explore other tools, I definitely encourage you to have a look at this. You can download it at parabia.tips, uh, which is also their website, and there you can download this tool to get all the other tools installed. Um, a quick look at what's out there. There are tons of tools out there in, in the community. Um, for example, Erik Swenson is a guy from Denmark and an, uh, another MVP. Uh, I know him very well, and he was one of the first ones and my inspiration actually to start building my own tool. Um, he built three, as far as I know, the Excel connector, uh, uh, Power BI report builder that you can connect to your own data model, and also to open your Power BI data model in Tableau if you like. Um, but definitely there are other good tools like SQL Server Profiler connected to your data model or uh, the guys from SQL BI built also the, the official Analyze and Excel experience connected to your data model. Um, but there's one that I really like, to be honest, and that's the one from David Sang. Um, you might know that if you write DEX expressions that, that sometimes you just write in one, one long line, which is very hard to read. But the good thing is that this DAX beautifier runs all your DAX expressions through the DAXformatter.com, which will easily format all your expressions in one go with just one click of a button. Um, so definitely one to try out uh, uh, and have a closer look at. Let's have a look at how these tools actually work. When we start talking about analysis service in memory, you might think uh, we were talking about Power BI, right? Yes, that's true. But in fact, Power BI runs analysis services. And that's what I already briefly showed you with a local host, and also what you can see if you open your task manager on your computer. Power BI runs analysis services under the hood. If you just expand Power, uh, your Power BI desktop setting uh, session in, in your task manager, you will see things like Microsoft SQL Server analysis services. That's actually running on the backend. Um, now we know that, we also know how we can interact with this model. Simply because analysis services uh, is known for the model.bim file and also the tabular object model language that it supports. Um, since September 2020, um, Power BI has a new standard in the metadata. The entire metadata format of Power BI is structured in the same way as analysis services which means that we can also use the tabular object model format to talk to Power BI and use things like tabular model scripting language. Besides that, uh, Power BI now has a metadata format that is called metadata version 3, 
um, which is just actually a step beyond uh, the NL services model for, uh, format um, and includes new features like you might have seen the release uh, hybrid tables where you can define the storage mode per, by partition, etc. Um, the table object model is an open format, it's a JSON format, um, which you can also easily open in a text editor and read what's in your model. Um, if you want to explore that, let's go back to, to a second to uh, Tableau Editor. The easy way to explore this is simply by connecting to a data model. And what you can do is simply click Save uh, or Save As. Uh, and with that, you can save a model.bim file and extract your metadata format from existing data models. Um, with that, I hope you understand a little bit better how the structure of your data model works under the hood behind, uh, behind Power BI. And let's have a closer look on how you can build your own external tools. External tools actually require a few things. Building them all starts with an ID. Of course, you need to have an ID. What does my tool need to do? Do we have a good ID for your tool? And does it interact in some way with the data model? Um, then go for it, just try it. It's not that hard as it sounds. Um, personally, I'm not a developer, uh, an application developer at all. And even I managed to build a tool and actually I'm already at the second version of my tools and we'll tell you more about that in a second. Um, but it comes down to three minor steps that you have to take. First of all, the biggest chunk is build your application, build the thing itself. Um, but in order to interact it with uh, or integrate it with Power BI Desktop, there are two other things that you need to do. You need to create an icon to show it in, in the top ribbon of Power BI Desktop. And also uh, you need to create an integration file, uh, a JSON file that you dump on a very specific location in, on your computer so that if Power BI starts up, that it can see where what external tools it has to load. Let's first have a look at build the application. Here I will explain it based on the model documenter that I built myself and then version one. Um, and as I said, I was not an uh, uh, application developer at all, and I still, I'm still not. Um, what I did, I, I simply used PowerShell. I used PowerShell to kick off a few tasks for me to just start a few processes on the back end. Uh, and this PowerShell shell script was triggered by clicking the button in the Power BI ribbon as a, from the external tools. And with that, I could easily start um, uh, my external tool uh, and let PowerShell do the rest for me. And PowerShell is not that hard uh, and there's a lot of content online that you can find and explore. And so I did. Um, I came up with a script that was in, in total, I believe, 100 lines long and half of it was comments for myself to understand what I was actually doing there. Um, but this is how you can start building your own external tool and simply trigger some actions. The second part is that image. That image needs to be in a uh, base64 format. You can simply start creating something in, in uh, Paint if you like, use Photoshop or any tool that you prefer, and drop it in a website. Typically use this website, convert, uh, base64 uh, image converter, um, that returns me the, the base64 image, which is just one long text line, which I can later paste at the place where I, where I need to have it. And these two elements that I just told you, the application and the icon itself in a base64 format is what I need to integrate in the integration file. The integration file is a file that runs on my computer and, and that has a very specific location. And in there I can define what my tool is, what's the tool that needs to be started when I click the button. Um, and also you can define the parameters that Power BI has to send to my tool in order to uh, start up this interaction between the tool and Power BI Desktop. So where are these files? Are these, all these files are in a very specific location, uh, in your program files, and then there's a folder common files Microsoft shared, where you will find Power BI Desktop and a specific folder for external tools. Let me just show you one and open one uh, to show you what this looks like. As you can see, uh, I have a bunch of these external tools, um, but if I just open one, for example, let's take my own one. This is the most recent one. Uh, and I just open it in a text editor here. 
and you will see that this is a st adjacent structure for a structured format um, that defines everything that my tool includes. We enlarge it by a bit. Um, so you can specify your version and the name of your tool, and this is the name that will appear in the Power BI Desktop ribbon. And then you have a description that will show uh, as a tooltip when you hover out over uh, your tool icon, you will see the name of your uh, or the description of your tool. Uh, in the path, you have to specify the application that you want to start. Um, so here we're looking at actually the application that is the model documenter. Uh, so I have to define where is this file that needs to be started. And in the arguments, you can pass on uh, uh, several variables. Uh, the two coming from Power BI are actually these two. So that's server and database. Server is that local host, as I just told you, and database is uh, uh, the GUI, GUI of your database instance that runs on this server. Um, and these two are required to interact between your tool and uh, Power BI Desktop. In my tool, I uh, added a few more, so I also have a file name that I specified, and uh, um, there's also another element here, the template file that I want to start. Last but not least, that icon file that we converted to, uh, or the icon uh, or image that we converted to base uh, 64, is what you will paste in here as icon data. And with that, it will appear as an image in Power BI Desktop. And basically, that, that's it. Um, this is also very well documented on the Microsoft website, how this works and how uh, this uh, file structure lo should look like. What I personally did is much easier. I just copy pasted one of the existing ones from one of the other tools and start editing it uh, so it matches my tool, um, which again explains that I'm not a developer. I just steal stuff from others and convert it into my own code. Um, so that is all you need to do to build an application uh, that interacts with Power BI. Um, so let's now briefly talk about documentation and why documentation. And that will bring me to the story how I set up my own uh, uh, external tool, the model documenter, how I build it and um, why I build it this tool actually. As I told in the beginning, I work in consulting and uh, I'm working with various clients. Uh, every now and then I take over projects for co from colleagues or hand it over to other colleagues. Um, and at the same time, we also come at client uh, or uh, uh, consult clients um, where maybe your competitor built a data model or they built something themselves and you have no clue uh, what kind of things you open. You open the data model, you have no clue what you're looking at. Sometimes they're even a little bit messy. So the first thing you might ask is, is there a documentation? Well, typically the answer is no. There was promise that there was documentation, but there isn't. Um, because in IT, or at least, let's speak for myself, I hate writing documentation. Uh, I hate writing uh, Word documents or whatever. I prefer to, to build a new data model or do whatever in Power BI as long as I don't have to write documentation. So, and I run this poll once in another user group meeting and, and the result was actually documentation is overrated. No, everyone said no. So why are we not writing it? But this was for me the trigger to look at other ways how I can document my Power BI solutions. Um, so I posted a tweet and um, this was actually back in 2020. And I asked the folks that followed me on Twitter, like, if you ever deliver a Power BI solution, which re results in a shared data set, especially that shared data set, does it come with proper documentation? Well, the majority answered, no, what is documentation, which is also a little bit of a joke, of course, but at the same time, it tells a lot about the, what people think about documentation. Um, some people luckily said, yes, nicely shared in Power BI, uh, and also a few said yes, but too much text. But the majority was only if I have time left of no, what's documentation? A good one was also what Asgar, uh, another uh, MVP from Denmark said, that I was missing an option. The only rise documentation is that it's prioritized, and I always ask it for it to be part of the task, but too often it's not prioritized by the clients. Even though clients pay me for advice, documentation is sadly one of those they often uh, ignore. And that's very true. That's also in line with my own experience. So 
if we start writing some documentation about our solutions, we do not want to end up with something like this. Uh, creating a big archive full of documents that probably nobody reads. If I ever receive documentation from a project that is more than five pages, I won't even start reading it, to be very honest, simply because it's too much text and I don't like that. I rather watch a video or something, um, but I don't like writing lengthy pages full of text. Um, so if you document your solution, what do you want to document? Um, and if you have any feedback on this, please feel free to drop that in the chat. And, and I'm, uh, I trust that Leon shares that with me later on as well. So I can use this uh, as a feedback for my tool as well. Um, if I personally look at it, uh, uh, I always generate documentation since I have this external tool and I just do it with a click of a button and don't care about it anymore because my documentation was written for me. Um, if I hand over my projects at the end results to my clients or to my coworkers, I always do this together with the model documentation that explains how I built this model uh, and why I built it this way and describes the elements that I put in there. Uh, so that helps me uh, um, in building this tool or uh, there was a reason to build this tool, but at the same time, once again, I was not an application developer, so it looked like I created a tool very quickly because I think one or two weeks after external tools became available, uh, available my tool was already out there. But in reality, it was a big mess. Um, I created that PowerShell script. I handed it over to my colleague, which is much better at PowerShell than I am. And he said, really, what did you do? He completely rewrote this PowerShell script to something better readable uh, uh, and much better performing. And in a week, I already had an next version of my tool. Um, which was just the start of a, of a long story. Um, I started investing a little bit more time in how this works and, and experience how I can improve that PowerShell element to trigger some actions uh, and basically also build the, the, the read elements to read the data model from Power BI. And Mark, sorry, just to jump in with a quick uh, anonymous question on the subject of PowerShell. Um, one of our participants is asking, are you using PowerShell to build the um, .executable file that will be called via the, G the JSON file that you shared earlier? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, I didn't use PowerShell to, to build that executable file. Um, the first version of my tool was just a PowerShell script that I triggered. And let me go back to that. Uh, for a second, because here I have the integration file from the first version of my tool. I still have it. Um, but there I simply had uh, this element, this executable that has every Windows machine has this, and it's always on the same location um, to just start uh, the Power BI or PowerShell executable. And then in uh, the variable for file, I specified uh, where my own PowerShell script is stored. So somewhere here, you will see a PS1 file. So this is the PowerShell file itself. But since this is not an executable, I couldn't specify that directly in the path. Um, so I'm just starting up PowerShell and then telling it here which file to open. Um, but I cannot build an executable directly from uh, um, PowerShell. Or maybe it's possible Then I learned something new tonight. Um, but as far as I know, I never managed to do that. Um, the actual executable that I just showed you, this, this version is model documenter version 2 that I published uh, beginning of this year, uh, about a month ago. Um, and I will show you that in a second, but that's also one of the demos. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. And I'll just ask you one more question, if you don't mind, before we move on. Sure. Um, we have a user that does, does David, they, they haven't installed Power BI in the default um, location um, in terms of the file and, and folder structure. Now, okay. with external tools, they run into some, some issues um, in terms of launching the external tools. Is there any recommendation around best practice uh, with where you have Power BI desktop installed when using external tools? Well, personally, I would also always opt for installing Power BI Desktop through the Windows Store or Microsoft Store, simply because if you ever receive an update from Microsoft, a bug fix or whatever, um, it is installed automatically. If you download the uh, installation from the web and uh, use, use the native installation, then you can indeed specify the location of your installation. 
I personally don't have experience with uh, the fact that Dan might be in a different location. As far as I know, the common file structure and the location of all these files should always be in this place. Um, but it can happen uh, that it's on a different location if you change the install location. But I'm not aware of that, to be honest. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, Going back to the reason why or what I want to do document my data models. Um, I questioned myself what I say actually want, do I want to document when I talk about documenting my data model. Um, I started with obviously just an overview of tables and columns and uh, the relationships between those those tables. Um, then I, I reached a point like, OK, but I also have DAX expressions and these DAX expressions is something that I created in the data model um, to, buy, to my best knowledge. So maybe it's good if I share something there as well. Um, and also maybe Power Query because in Power Query I created the, uh, the logic to transform the data. In fact, this all this is what the data model, uh, uh, the, the model documenter is covering today. Um, Though there are a few things that are missing, and uh, that is basically the visuals, the bookmarks, page navigations, those kind of things. Were, so let's say the report in general, the visual layer of Power BI is not documented. And this is basically because uh, um, the interaction between Power BI and an external tool is happening to this analysis services engine that runs under Power BI. Um, analysis services is only the data model and has nothing to do with the visual layer. Um, in fact, we cannot actually read something from the metadata at this moment uh, from the visual layer um, simply because it's not very good readable. Uh, if you ever try to do something unsupported, um, which is unzipping your Power BI file and try to explore what's there, um, you will see a lot of files that don't make a lot of sense to you, uh, which are actually the visual layer of Power BI. Um, so we only primarily focus on the data model at this moment. Um, that all resulted in model documenter version one, and that resulted actually in a new Power BI file. Because what the model documenter is doing at the moment that you hit the button, it will uh, dump a file for you on a specific location, um, which is actually just a new JSON file with the uh, location of your data model, the local host, and the database uh, GUID. And based on that, I start up a new Power BI file, a template file, uh, which is an empty Power BI file, and then picks up that location and starts reading your data model the, from the local host. Um, so basically, all the logic about the model documentation is built in Power BI itself. Um, that is what, what model documenter version one is doing. Uh, and I can sh briefly show you how that works. I still have it uh, running on my machine. So here we have the document model button version one. In a second, we will also go to version two, which is here a little bit further to the right. If I spin up version one, um, you actually see something flickering through my screen, which is obviously on my other screen. Um, but let's try to move it. It's a little bit too fast to move it actually. Um, you might have seen it in a, a little second. Um, what it was doing uh, is while running it, it dumps a file on my uh, C drive of my computer um, where it directly gives me the ability to show you that. Um, where is it? It's in business ops temp because this version is installed through business ops. Uh, what you will see here is that this JSON file is created. And this JSON file um, it's not that nicely formatted, but it returns you the local host of my Power BI instance and the database GUID. This is where my current Power BI model is running, and with that, I can run a new version of the uh, model documenter that connects to this location, uh, and with that, read my data model. Um, that is what version one is doing. Other files that you'll see here is the two template files that I created. Uh, one is an Excel file, the other one is a Power BI template file. And there's a little log file that shows me if there went something wrong, 
uh, you can find here in the logs when the tool was last run, um, what was uh, happening on the screen at that moment, so what was printed to the screen, which version was running, etc. Um, this is what version one is doing, and I used that one up to, let's say, December last year, uh, but there were a lot of things that that were a little bit of a pity to me, like I want to improve this and I want to think that it works better. I received a lot of questions and feedback from the community about things that didn't work for them, especially installing the tool seems to be very hard. Um, so the initial version that I built was completely based up to my knowledge and the little knowledge I had at the moment that external tools were new. Uh, and I never built an actual application before, so I have to say it was a great start, but it was time for a better version. And so I did. I built a model documenter version two um, together with one of my coworkers. He helped me a lot uh, in fix it. And with that, we fixed a lot of bugs and limitations that we had in the first version. And it turned out to be an actual application. And this application uh, is the .exe file that you just saw in a, a second ago. Um, which just runs on the back end without any requirement of PowerShell or any other technology um, that I'm not cannot control from the application itself. But before we go there, I want to briefly tell you a little bit more about what are we actually reading from your data model with this tool. Um, you might have heard of dynamic management views in the past, and dynamic management views are actually analysis services dynamic management views that are queries that return information about model objects, server operations, and server health. Uh, in general, there are four different ones, being DB schema, which tells you something about the database model, um, discover operations that helps you to uh, uh, re retrieve information from act uh, active sessions in your Power BI model or in your model, then you have TM schema, which stands for a tabular uh, that you see running behind Power BI and uh, Azure Analysis Services. And you have MD schema, which is MDX and multidimensional. These dynamic management views help you to read everything that is in your uh, data model. And um, typical things that you can read are uh, information from the tables that you have in your model but also about columns, measures, the perspectives you might have, even partition information. And you can query that with by using something like SQL Server Management Studio or also with DAX Studio. So let's have a look at DAX Studio and how we can actually do this. So we still have this same data model open. We have the data model here from uh, the dashboard in the day, and here we have DAX Studio. On the very bottom here, you will see three different tabs. Uh, first one is metadata. When we look at our data model, we have something called functions and we have something called DMVs, which stands for the dynamic management views. As you can see, there are tons of different uh, DMVs that you can run directly from, Para, from Dex Studio on your um, RBI desktop model. Let's, for example, start with something about our tables. And if I run this one, I can simply double click it and run it here. And here I can see, let me zoom this in also a little bit and enlarge the application. Um, you can see what tables are there in uh, the Power BI model. So we see the sales table, product table, etc. So these are all the tables and we see a lot of more information, whether the table is hidden or not, uh, the storage ID, when it was last modified, uh, and even when the structure was last modified. In other words, when was this table created? Um, all this information tells us something about our model, and so we can do the same things, for example, um, when we want to know something about our Power Query uh, that is in Power BI. Interestingly enough, Power Query is not something that you will find uh, by looking for queries. Power Query defines the partition and in that way, we have to search for partition information. So here we see the, the table name and table ID again. And when we scroll a little bit to the right, we can see here the power query definition of this partition. And in this case, it's from the sales table. So you can see that it's read from a CSV document and where it comes from. Um, so that tells us a little bit about the logic behind each and every table that we have. 
Um, other things that are typically interesting to have a look at are measures, for example. And one thing that I want to show you is, for example, you have the MD schema measures. When I run that one, um, you'll see that I get the same result as one when, when I run the TM schema, so the multidimensional or the tabular model schema queries. They're almost the same. The structure is slightly different, uh, and the columns that are returned are also slightly different. But once you interact with Power BI, I encourage you to go for the TM schema because Power BI is by default a tabular model. Um, you can see the measure expression here and even the description if that is filled in. And it also brings me to, again, to documenting Power BI solutions and how can you document it? Make sure you fill in the descriptions. If I create a measure here, um, I might know what I meant by this calculation. Now, these, these ones are not so uh, difficult, but I know what, what this measure meant, but maybe if I hand it over to my coworker, he has no clue what he's looking at if I wrote some fancy decks. What you can do in Power BI Desktop is add a description to each and every object. So, for example, when I create a measure here in the model view, I can simply enter a description here. For example, let's just take this one. Sales for from our you can Enter whatever you want. Um, and once this is saved, I rerun this query in Dex Studio. And now I have a description here. So make sure you fill in the descriptions uh, um, if you create a DEX measure. Importantly, a limitation of Power BI Desktop today is that you cannot review the DEX expression while you're writing your descriptions here. Um, so you have to remember the name, go to the model view and type it in. Personally, what I uh, prefer to do is start using a uh, uh, tabular editor because in Tableau Editor, when I, for example, look at, uh, let me connect it again to the same Power BI file. Um, so I connect it to my local instance. Uh, yeah, I know it. Um, then I can simply just go into my table uh, and see these measures here. I can see the expression itself. And at the same time, I can enter this description here uh, right at the bottom directly. So I can do both at the same time, which makes it much easier. Um, so also something you can find about measures. Um, something else that could be interesting is maybe if you're interested to see a little bit about the roles that are in Power BI and roles as in row level security. Um, there's an operation here called discover Power BI roles. When I try to run this one, you'll see that it returns an error. Um, this one is in Dutch actually, but it shows me Power BI roles are only supported in the Power BI service, um, which means that it only works when I connect to an XMLA endpoint. And that means that it needs to be on premium. Though the roles that are defined in my Power BI uh, um, desktop instance, I can read them by using the TM schema roles. And with that, I get two roles in return. In this data model, I have a US role and a Canada role. Um, and what's very interesting to see here is that we have a description field, but in Power BI Desktop, there's no place where you can fill in this description. Um, luckily, we have Tabular Editor to the rescue, because also here, uh, if you go to roles in, Power, in Tabular Editor, I can just enter the role description here if I want to. For example, this one is for USA. So uh, filters down the data mobile only to USA items. Whatever text I type in here, that's completely up to you. I save it back to the model, um, rerun this query, and you can see that I now can simply add descriptions. Um, so in this way, uh, you can also add descriptions to your uh, uh, roles, but we still don't have anything about the role expression, so we can't see the actual filter applied. Interestingly enough, again, we need to use a different uh, uh, dynamic management view here, which is the table permissions. Um, and in table permissions, we can see the expression applied on each and every table. So here we see the table that is affected. Um, by, with, by a role, 
and the uh, DAX expression that is applied. So the field country should equal USA and field country should equal Canada. In this case, if I connect all these different elements from the dynamic management views together, it will be easier for me um, to generate something useful out of my data model and tell, that tells me something about my data model in some sort of documentation. Um, and with that, I can actually automate uh, the documentation um, that can actually save me a lot of time and run on every computer basically because I can publish this uh, model documentation in the very same workspace as where I published the data model itself. Um, let me go back a second to the version one. I told you a little bit about the first version where I worked with PowerShell and uh, to receive the server and database information. I dumped that in a connection file, downloaded a template from GitHub, and it opens the, the, the Power BI template. That's all that this 100 line uh, uh, PowerShell script is doing for me. Um, though this gave me a lot of troubles. Simply the first learnings that I took from it is capturing server and database parameters needed to have a double slash. Also the path that is specified in the files needed to have a double slash. Well, everything on Windows works with a single slash. For some reason, this was an escape character and I had to use a double slash. Uh, I learned a lot of PowerShell in general because I didn't do a lot with PowerShell yet. Um, and what I personally hated to do was uh, uh, first dumping the JSON file with the server and database information and then uh, opening a Power BI template. I actually wanted to on demand fill in these, per these parameters in this Power BI template, but it's unfortunately not possible to on demand edit a Power BI template file and directly uh, do that. So the uh, temporary file was some sort of workaround for me. Um, in version 1.2, I already increased a lot of things and added uh, uh, an Excel type of uh, export where you can also export it to an Excel format and directly enter your descriptions there. But honestly, I didn't really like that. And um, to be very honest, uh, it also came with a lot of known limitations and frustrations for me or irritations. Um, simply, everyone running the tool uh, had to set its PowerShell ex uh, execution policies to unrestricted. If you run the tool with different PowerShell uh, execution policies, it simply didn't run. Um, also, in Power BI, you might know these privacy levels. Since I uh, joined a lot of tables on the back end from these different da dynamic management views, um, I had to set it to ignore privacy levels. Someone that didn't set, have this setting applied on this machine run into uh, numerous questions whether you want to connect these tables together and if you want to rebuild this data combination, and that returned a lot of errors. Also, there are all SQL queries that were joining these things. Um, so that's a native database query, in fact. And there's an option in Power BI that requires approval for every query you run, which uh, resulted in the fact that running the model documenter with this option enabled, you had to click yes for 18 times if you really wanted to run this query. So for me, that was a, a, a big pain, and I, I started looking at other ways to improve this tool. Um, not even speaking about other things like uh, there was no support for live connections. If your data model connected to an analysis services or your data model connected to a live connected Power BI data set in the service, it didn't work. Um, or even installing it with all these separate files was also not very easy. But honestly, this was a great start, and I told everyone in my surrounding, from now on, everyone can document its, uh, their Power BI solutions. Um, in the first version, I received a lot of feedback, brought me to a second version, where I simply converted everything in a C-sharp application. C-sharp, never wrote it before. Uh, I can still not do that, to be honest. Um, but I had the pleasure of working together with a colleague um, that knew what he was doing. Um, um, we uh, talked with a few other developers of external tools. In specific, we talked with Marco Russo, for example, which pointed us to, or who pointed us to the um, new get packages for our, that are available for the, uh, uh, the VertiPack analyzer engine. 
And with that, we are able to extract the model.bim file from Power BI. So we could easily import the NuGet package that is doing that, which was publicly available on the internet, and build that build actually an application around this extraction mechanism um, and directly start the Parvia template file from that. Um, something else that I did, the first version was also open source, but a little bit harder to understand. But this one is actually just a Visual Studio solution and I completely open sourced everything. So if you want to contribute, please feel free to do that. You can find it on my GitHub. Uh, you can directly contribute to it and also find documentation there about how I uh, built this tool together with my colleague and how we set it up. Um, we also decided to build it from scratch to overcome the previous issues that we had. So let me just show you how it works today. Um, Installing the model documenter today is a simply you you start the installer, you click next, next, finish, and you're done. It's nothing else you have to do. On the back end, we will cover for you everything that it will download or, or it will automatically put the file in the right folder that Parvia knows where the tool is, um, as well as that we directly uh, put the Parvia template file on your machine so that if you click the button, that it doesn't have to download this template file first. It's already there. Model Documenter version 2 has also a new icon, of course, uh, needed to be a little bit fancier. And if I simply click this button, you will see here a small uh, window appearing that is loading all the information from my data model. I decided to just leave this on the screen. I could have hidden this as well. Um, reason why I kept it is basically that you can see something is happening. If you don't have it, people might think, oh, it doesn't work and click the button another hundred times. Speaking from my own experience, I would have done that probably. Um, I don't have that much patience, so I would have just clicked the button another 100 times that it doesn't work for me uh, while it is actually doing something. In the meantime, I didn't click any other button and it's now spinning up a new Power BI desktop instance. Uh, if my computer is with me today, um, and this computer did this new instance will load the metadata of my other Power BI desktop file. Um, the good thing is this will directly document my model and it will directly start loading the data without asking questions if I want to use this data combination without authentication questions, nothing. Because it's running on my own machine, we could pass on the Windows uh, uh, credentials on the back end from your current logged in user that it directly loads with that in mind. And here I actually receive an error and I know what this error is because I'm running a preview version. Uh, and this is all about uh, a perspective relationship um, which returns into an invalid relationship on the back end. So let me fix that one in a second because I know where it is. Um, I started integrating perspectives as well in the latest version and with that it uh, comes with an invalid relationship here which is linking the perspective names. So if I simply Oh, let me just delete this relationship for now. I'm still uh, going to fix this. The uh, reason why this is happening, a perspective in the current structure doesn't have an ID, so I had to link it based on a name. And it turns out that in a tabular object model, you can have duplicate perspective names. Um, I didn't even knew that, that it's allowed to have twice the same name, because if you try to enter twice a measure with the same name, that is not allowed. Uh, even if they reside in different tables, um, but that doesn't apply for perspectives apparently. Um, so one more relationship to delete and click reload, and then it should work. Also delete this one. Yes, you can go. And let me just click apply changes and then it will start loading all the da data that we know about the other data model. This, this issue is unfortunately also in the latest build of, of the model documenter, so I'll make sure that I will release a, a bug fix for this uh, early next week, just to make sure that all the current issues are out. Um, if this thing can just go, then I can hit apply. In the meantime, Leon, are there any questions at this moment? 
Yes, we do have a couple of questions. I'll just scroll back up to our first one. OK, so um, does does your tool here, Mark, show whether columns or measures are being used in the report? Is it possible to just extract a list of all columns or measures across a series of data sets and show where they come from and whether they're being used or not? A uh, very good question. Um, I currently do not cover uh, any aspect to show you whether a column is used or not, because to do that, I have to interact, uh, create an interaction between the report and the data set. Because in the data set, you might have imported this, this column and in the report, you're not using it. The good thing though, is that I connected with Imke Feldman and Imke is an MVP from Germany. And she also created an, an external tool uh, called Power BI Cleaner, and she's also at version two, Power BI Cleaner version two, um, that covers this scenario. So with Power BI Cleaner, uh, I believe she's using an extraction from the performance analyzer uh, combined with uh, uh, um, some DMVs that are similar to what I just showed you. And with that, she's able to match these two things together. Uh, we intentionally do not overlap. We discussed this uh, during our developments and said, OK, she focuses on that aspect and I'm primarily focusing on documenting what's in your data model at this moment. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. OK, any other questions at this moment? We do indeed. We have we have something more of a comment than a question, uh, which is that we would like to have you add um, something like a Windows progress bar um, on, on loading screens. Um, okay. And I've also asked that Microsoft do the same for Power BI local data set refreshes on the loading screens. Um, ah. That would be ideal. Um, outside of that, we do have a question to ask you, what would be your ultimate external tool that doesn't currently exist? Oh, that's a very good question. Let me think about that one in a second, but I'll explain a little bit about what this one is doing. Excellent, thank you. Um, I quickly uh, fixed the issue by removing two relationships, and this will bring you into the result of the model documenter, which is just another Power BI report. Uh, if you go in here, you will see uh, just the first introduction screen to your data model uh, and some metadata about which versions uh, of metadata you have, uh, how it was generated in Power BI in this case, etc. cetera. Um, also, you will see uh, uh, all the information about your data model. And in this case, I can see everything here um, from the type of the, my table, whether it's a, a calculated table, um, index or it is a power query generated table for example like this one you can see information about last refresh time modify time if it is an import or direct query or even in dual mode and if it has a description or not if i simply click one of these tables uh, it will also show me on the right hand side the table expression um, so it's a little bit slower in this current experience with tons of windows open um, but it will show me the power query expression here um, and it will allow me here to drill to uh, a specific page that shows me all the measures in this table and here a page which will show me all the calculated columns or related columns in the selected table. For now I'll just manually go to the table view and in tables I will also show you information about obviously uh, uh, or in columns I will show you something about the columns itself the number of calculated columns that you have in your model. In this case, the majority is coming from the automated date timetables that are generated. Uh, something about the columns uh, cardinality, uh, how it is sorted and the format string if you have one. Um, furthermore, I also have something about measures, obviously. Um, and that will tell me all about the measures, measure expressions and uh, uh, the descriptions uh, if they are. Uh, in this case, there's only one, so it will also show me there are seven measures without the description, uh, something I should care a little bit more about. Um, and in here, if I select it in the same way as we've seen with the tables, it will show me the measure expression here. Something else that I'm personally a little bit more proud of is a relationship overview. It took a while to visualize this in an uh, understandable way, um, so what this is doing, it shows me uh, all the relationships that my data model has. Uh, it also shows a, a fancy visualization on the bottom of all these different tables. 
uh, and how they are connected. Um, it also shows uh, the uh, direction of the relationship and the, car the cardinality of the relationship. Uh, and if you have any many to many or bidirectional relationships, it will mark them in red uh, with a little warning uh, that you should be aware of potential ambiguity in your data model uh, and other risks that come with it. Last but not least, uh, the security tab will show you everything about uh, the world level security roles that you have, the descriptions that are uh, that might be added, and uh, uh, the role uh, description or the uh, filter expression related to it. Um, this basically summarizes what the model documenter exports today. Uh, the two relationships that I just deleted are related to uh, this, the perspectives that I hope to add anytime soon. Um, but I first had to sort out this issue with uh, with the relationships. Um, with that, I will uh, quickly summarize the, the the session, and then I will jump into the latest questions that you might have. Um, a short wrap up. If we look at external tools, external tools in general are depending on uh, analysis metadata format, and with that also the Power BI analysis services format. External tools allow you to develop with third party tools uh, like Tableau Editor, like uh, SQL Server Management Studio if you want, or any other tool that integrates with, with uh, uh, Power BI. Um, it also opens up a lot of uh, tons of opportunities for you uh, to contribute to Power BI because it's fairly easy, as we've seen, to start building your own tool. With something simple like PowerShell, you can already start uh, building your first uh, or start building your first interaction with Power BI. For example, uh, uh, in the documentation about external tools uh, on official Microsoft uh, website, they wrote down a case how you can simply dump and show the information about your model on the screen, like the server and database name. But it already gets you started, and from there on, you can you can do whatever you like. Focusing on a model documenter, it allows me personally to be lazy or call it efficient by generating documentation uh, instead of writing it myself. Um, it opens up tons of new op of opportunities to, to uh, um, hand over solutions more easily uh, without writing many pages in text. Uh, and I personally think it's super powerful for self-service purposes uh, when you build a centralized data model and share that with end users. So these end users can easily understand the data model, read the descriptions, see the actual expressions behind it, etc. With that, I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, once more, show uh, uh, a little bit more information about me. If you want to connect with me, feel free to do so on my socials. Um, if you have any good feedback, I really appreciate the feedback that, uh, that was just shared about uh, uh, an, a loading screen. I'll definitely see how I can, uh, can make that happen. Um, once again, thanks. Uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask them. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. What a fantastic session. Um, I think that we've all benefited from your wealth of knowledge and experience there in terms of learning external tools. So thank you very much for dedicating the time to the community. Um, for all of the community listening in, please do. I've just put a comment into the Q&A um, that's asking you for some feedback on today's webinar. So please do take 15 seconds out um, to give us some feedback so we can, can continue to make these sessions um, as beneficial as possible. Um, with that being said, Mark, we do have um, some questions for you and I won't let you forget the question around um, which external tool you would make, but maybe we can come back that, to that in a moment. Um, so our first question will be, um, can we get all the details, including hidden tables in Power Query using this tool? Yes, you can. Also, hidden tables will be uh, viewed. Um, I gray them out only uh, simply because I think there should be some identifier that, that tells you that this table is hidden. Um, but all tables that are part of your data model, hidden or not hidden or whatever you do, they will be there. Excellent. Um, our next question is, um, if if we have a series of models hosted in a premium workspace, is it possible to automate the running of this tool across all of them, perhaps using a service principle? Um, unfortunately, not at this moment. Um, I think there will be ways to do this uh, because if you spin up this tool not triggered from Power BI Desktop, but as a separate tool, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, enter in the comment line the um, 
connection string, the XML endpoint, in fact. So what you could do if you, for example, do something in the comment line and authenticate it with a service principal or uh, or with an uh, uh, just a normal user, a service user, for example, service account. I think it would be possible, but I didn't test this, but it's not a native functionality that I integrated today. But honestly, I think it is possible. Excellent. Um, we have some comments as well coming in. Uh, Mark, this tool is awesome and has improved a lot. Thank you for making documentations a lot easier for us developers, and I will obviously second that as well. Um, another comment that says this looks very cool. Um, is this something in version two that will connect to live con and um, to a live connection from a Power BI data set? Uh, a very good question. Uh, today, if you connect to an analysis services data set, it runs uh, already. It works. Um, Reason why this works is that the full connection string of analysis services is available and therefore I can connect to it. Unfortunately, when I connect to a premium data set, um, it tells me that it, it's connecting to something like pbi.azure, uh, uh, which is not the XMLA endpoint that I receive. Um, so if you want to run this, you can do this by uh, using uh, the analysis services connector in Power BI Desktop and enter your XML endpoint there. And if you then click run uh, run uh, model documenter, then it will work. But if you use the data set connector in Power BI Desktop, it won't. Excellent. Thank you very much. Another comment and question coming in um, is absolutely awesome current and future capabilities, um, auto generation, and would you be packaging this as an app in the future? Uh, I would love to package this as an app. Uh, personally, it took me already a lot of effort to come to this stage. Um, package it as an app and, and put it in the Microsoft Store would be even more uh, great, but I think that I need to have a lot of certificates and whatever to do that, which I don't have at this point. Um, so I don't think that will happen anytime soon, uh, but maybe it's a nice one to investigate. We'll watch this space and uh, hopefully we can have you back again with us in the future, Mark, to talk about more of the upcoming developments as well. Cool. Uh, there was one question that, uh, that I still owe you an answer to. Uh, is there that's an good. external tool that's not there at this moment that, that would be my ultimate tool? To be honest, I'm a little bit biased, of course, by the whole documentation topic, and uh, I'm not saying that documentation is the go-to way, um, but I would really love if someone can just create a tool that shows me uh, something more about the visuals and, and about uh, uh, bookmarks and whether uh, a visual is shown or not in a bookmark state and those kind of things. Because I think that that information, bookmarks in, in general are pretty complex, especially if you look at, at uh, hiding visuals or not, that can, be, can become very complex and there's no easy way to get an overview of that. Um, of course, with the uh, performance analyzer, you can extract a little bit of information about your visuals and you get visual IDs and the queries that are run on the back end, but that's it basically. Um, so I would say if there is an external tool that can make it happen to read information about your visuals, uh, and for example, show an example of the visual on the screen and then show the query that is associated with it, and um, even better, also bind that to your data model would be even cooler, I think. OK, I know I know we're running over time here, Mark, but I am going to ask you is do you feel that the um, Action BI Toolkit um, ha has some of this functionality? And, and do you mean like? So currently the, the Action BI Toolkit um, is able to um, decompile um, Power BI, the Power BI files, report files. Yeah. Um, in, a, in, a, in a similar way to, tab, to the way the tabular editor decompiles data sets into BIM files, and um, mm -hmm. the Power BI um, talk is able to decompile it into, into JSON files. Now, would this open up um, some of the functionality that you that you speak about here? Mm, I, actually, I think it does. Um, and I think that, that everything that I just said already exists in smaller pieces, but we have to connect it all together. Yes. And and that's basically that that everyone that build a tool or or does something with it builds a little piece, and it would be better if we just collaborate that and put everything together. Um, 
and that's for example what you see see happening now with with more external tools. I know that uh, Daniel Oitiker, the guy behind uh, uh, Turbo Editor, works a lot together, and they share a lot of information with uh, Darren Gospel and and uh, for, from Dex Studio, but also with Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari and, and tons of others. Um, I know they connect a lot and, and share information about new upcoming things. Also discuss it directly with Microsoft. So let's see what the uh, what we can do in the future. And I think that if we look at uh, decompiling Power BI in general, everything related to the data model is supported at this moment. If we look at things on the visual engine, um, I doubt if that's supported. If someone made it happen, that would be really cool, but I don't think it is any supported uh, format. No, that's correct, and uh, I totally agree. Hopefully, in the future, um, the key word here is, or the key words, should I say, is watch this space, um, because things will change as we move forward. So, um, once again, Mark, that is all of our questions um, for our session today. Like I said, fantastic um, session. We've really appreciated having you with us. Cool. Thanks. Pleasure is all mine, and thanks everyone for attending. I really appreciate your time. Uh, if you have any feedback, once again, please feel free to let me know on my social channels or directly drop me an email. Either way is fine. Excellent. Thank you very much. And once again, thank you very much to everybody that's participated and attended today's session. Um, this session has been brought to you in association with our sponsors, Onyx Data. And as always, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you've been here with us at the Microsoft Power BI UK User Group. Look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe. Bye.